Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good day, Dr. Wanda Filer. Hi, how are you? I am fine. I want my audience to know that Dr. Filer, Filer is the president of the American Academy of Family Physicians, and she's here today to talk about the state of men's health in 2016. We also want to know, why do women live longer than men? Dr. Filer, you, hey, tell us those answers. Well, ma'am, I'll tell you that we did a survey of uh, men across the country age 18 and over, and we compared those results to a, a similar survey that we'd done back in 2007. What we found now in 2016 is more men, 49% um, of them, are reporting that they are in excellent or very good health, um, but they also are reporting that they're more likely to be diagnosed with a chronic disease than they were back in 2007. Uh, so the, the picture is, if you will, sort of a mixed bag. Men are more likely to exercise, substantially more likely to have a have a regular workout schedule than they did back in 2007. 52% of men are exercising regularly now, and so that's the good news. But they're still saying that they wait to go to the doctor until they feel extremely sick. Um, too many of them are um, not getting to the doctor, do not ha have enough of a relationship. More than they used to, but we more of them still need a relationship with a family physician. You are so right, doctor. What are the top ten, uh, the top medical conditions? Could you give us a brief synopsis on that? That middle-aged men uh, uh, are affected by. Sure. In this particular study, what we did is we asked about five conditions. We asked them about arthritis. Um, um, heart disease, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, diabetes, and also cancer. And as I mentioned, more men said that they'd been diagnosed with one of those. But I, I think you need to think of that a little bit, um, sort of like a, a, a double-edged sword. I'm sort of hopeful that from this description that because men are a little bit more likely to go to the doctor than they used to, maybe they're being picked up at an earlier phase. So if you've got high blood pressure and we detect it early, we can save you um, with you know medication that's pretty straightforward, lots of great treatments available today, and prevent you from having all the bad effects from uncontrolled high blood pressure. I worry maybe more about the men who are not yet diagnosed than I do those have, who have been diagnosed. Did the survey reveal why men put their health on the back burner? Well, it didn't really get into underlying reasons, except that many men said that they, they um, only really go when they feel sick. And the problem is that feeling well is not the same thing as being well, as being healthy. Um, when, when you have a family physician, one of our, our priorities is to get to know you, to figure out what your personal health goals are, and also have a conversation with you. It, how are things going at home? How are things going at work? Um, you know, are there things that we can do to help you tweak maybe your exercise program, your, your diet, um, even tobacco use, alcohol use, other substance abuse? Things that we can do to help you live a longer, healthier life. And that may not necessarily involve a test or even a medication, but having somebody who knows you, that when you do have a problem or a question that you feel that you can reach out and you've got a comfort level, that has been shown that it really improves your health long term. Why is it, once again, and I think you answered my question, but why is it it's so important to have uh, this communication relationship with your primary doctor? Well, in, in family medicine, we believe in what we call the biopsychosocial model. So it's not just who, what your body systems are. It's who you are as a person. It's who you are within the context of your family and your community. And how are things going in your life? Um, that conversation, sometimes it's, it's a matter of you, you seek out advice. Sometimes it's a matter of there are things going on that are putting your health at risk. And we can have that conversation with you. We can also 
you know, open doors to resources and information. Uh, sometimes you will need some tests done. Um, sometimes we'll find things, we'll catch it early, we'll get it under control and, and put you back in control of your health rather than feeling that these disease states are taking control of you. I think for many men, a lot of times this is fear. It's um, that sense of, hey, I'm tough, I'm gonna just stick it out. But the problem is that these conditions um, then go under the radar. And if we're gonna take really good care of our cars, the least we can do is take really good care of our bodies. Dr. Fila, if there was one great thing that came out of the survey, and many things came out of there, what would you leave my audience with? What I would leave your audience with is we're making slow progress for in men's health. Um, they're exercising more. More of them have a family physician. We're just not where we need to be quite yet. That's great information. Is there a place on the web that my audience can go and see the survey? Yes, ma'am. They could go to familydoctor.org slash men's health. And there's all sorts of information there about men's health in general. And then about the survey, they could go to aafp.org. Dr. Wanda Fire, thank you so much for being my guest today. She's the president of American Academy of Family Physicians. Thank you so much for that information that we can all use. Thank you so much.